angels is up in this place right now. And when any demon tries to come through the door, they just they shine that sword. <laughs> Can I get a witness? The devils ain't got right. nothing. I wish I was like, God, let me see the angels that surround the saints. You know? All right? The only way the devil can even have any access to us is when we entertain sin. Amen. Right. The devil ain't got nothing in you, boo. Amen. He don't have no place in you and Amen. no power over you through the blood of Jesus yes. except for what you give him. You the one who gives him place. When you give him place, you give him an inch, he going to take the mark. Amen. You give him a toenail crack. See, the devil's got access to your mind. He puts a thought there. And he knows when you entertain it. That's where you got 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and you got to cast down every ungodly imagination yeah. that does not line up with the Word of God. You know when a thought comes into your mind if it's holy. You got to take thought of your, you got to be accountable for your thought life. Amen. I'm not in your head. You Amen. could be looking, praise the Lord, and you could be thinking, I'd love to chop his head off. Amen. I would love to pull it. You know what I'm saying? Look, when these thoughts come into your head immediately, you got a Philippians 4 9. You got to say, <laughs> Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, just, holy, pure, of a good report. Amen. Is there anything virtuous in this thought? Is there anything praiseworthy in this thought? If not, what you got to do? Cast Give it the boot. Cast it down. Come on. You know, that's where the word works if you work it. All right? I didn't get this out of a book either. I live it. But it works because I am living proof that the word works. All right? Now. Hey, Ma. Hey, darling. Okay, what we need to realize is that the spiritual world is far more real than the natural world. I asked if you were taping. I told you to tape this. I even had him set up the tape last night. I thought you meant this. No, my tape. Watch it on YouTube, Mom. Well, I'm going to put it on YouTube if I can figure out how to do it for myself. No, I never figure out how to do it out. We'll see you later. Right All right, I'll wait till you get the tape for this next part. Let's see, how many more pages do we have? Spiritual world is Well, I don't know if we're going to get to this, but we can save that for next time. Yeah, I'll repeat it. Here, let me... Spiritual world is far more real. It's far more real than the natural world. The natural world. But I'll repeat it again for Mom to probably take. Go ahead. I'll... Uh, Wow, and another scripture too, first I think it's first Corinthians uh, five seven is it? Be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. He roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He's looking around. He's on the prowl. He's putting thoughts in our head, waiting to see who's going to take the bait. But if you don't take the bait, you work the word, you cast it down, he's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the same time. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know all things. He's not omnipotent. He's not more powerful than God and the word. Amen. So when, you, when he comes with the thought and you work the word, he has to go. But when he places that thought in your head and you entertain that thought, then he calls his cousin and they just keep on because they know they like got a fishing pole. Once they give you the bait and you take it and act on it, then they just keep with the big guns. And then a man is drawn away when he's enticed by the cords and the sin that's in his own 
apart, you see? So then you're putting shackles and chains because you entertained. Uh, anyway, let me keep going. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, you're on. I got you there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to the races. <laughs> All right. What we need to realize is that the spiritual world is far more real than the natural world. We need to know what to look for. Satan, when he approaches us, he won't do it as a demon of darkness because we would recognize him for what he is and we would fight him, right? Yeah. right. Instead, what does he come as? That's right. Instead, he comes as an angel of light. The problem is we can become blinded by that light a light known as demonic justification. Okay? When we're blinded by the angel of light, Pastor Mike calls that demonic justification. This means we can know that we were wrong, but we put our sin into the proper context and we just explain it away. Okay, I'll read that again. The problem is we can become blinded by that light, a light known as demonic justification. This means we can know that we were wrong. We know we were wrong. But we put our sin into the proper context and we explain it away. Example, I'm just a man. We explain as we let our eyes wander. It's just my natural urges. It doesn't mean anything. It's her fault for dressing that way anyway. Okay? You getting a revelation here? This is demonic justification. When we let our eyes wander. I'm just a man. I mean, you know, this is the biggest lie. Yeah, we're just a man, but that's where you got to come out of agreement with lust. You gotta look somebody in the eyes if you can't help looking at the hiney and let the, anyway, let me get back to this. <laughs> right, now, no, <laughs> we explain as we let our eyes wander. It's just my natural urges. It doesn't mean anything. It's her fault for dressing that way. Anyway, we spit out every possible reason for justifying our actions, not realizing that these lies are only binding us closer and closer to our sin. These lies, these mental strongholds, these, this belief system, this belief system, mental stronghold, satanic lies, they bind us with cords closer and closer to our sin. And I, and, and I got my own, we all, everybody, if you don't know your strongholds, well then you need to get along with mom and let her tell you. <laughs> she knows them. If not, she'll read your mail and she'll tell you. All right? <laughs> now, we had a tough day at work. We're under stress. Things with the family aren't perfect. And therefore, we deserve to get a little relief from life. Okay, we justify why we look or what have you. But all this accomplishes is imprisonment, not with bars and chains, and not by the devil on the outside, but by the devil on the inside. So if you picture, you are in prison in your mind by your belief system. See, so you, are, you have imprisoned yourself in your own mind. You're, you're, you're in prison. I want to go on, but I want to get this book finished. As humans, we tend to operate in cycles. We'll make the same decisions over and over, despite knowing where those decisions will always lead. But instead of changing our minds, we try and change our circumstances. Instead of changing our minds, instead of binding our minds to the mind of Christ, 
and casting down these imaginations, we try to change the circumstances instead of changing our minds. How do you change your mind? You got to wash your mind with the water of the word. You wash your mind and you cleanse your mind with the water of the word. That's how you.